The Knicks and the Pacers are set for an epic clash in the semifinals of the Eastern Conference. It's going to be a highly competitive, highly intense matchup. And recently, Rick Carlisle, the Indiana Pacers head coach, spoke to the media about the competitive nature of this series and also the terrifying abilities of Jalen Brunson. We're going to break down exactly what he said and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. The Pacers head coach speaks out on the difficulty of guarding Jalen Brunson. Well, he would know, wouldn't he? He used to be the coach of the Dallas Mavericks. And who did he coach at the time? Luka and Jalen Brunson. So he definitely understands Jalen, his tendencies, and the type of player that he is. That doesn't mean he's going to be able to figure him out or be able to guard him in this series. But it does speak to the fact that when he speaks about Jalen Brunson, you want to listen up a little bit more close because he definitely knows what he's talking about. And recently, he went on the Dan Patrick show and he said the following about Jalen Brunson and his terrifying abilities and how difficult it is to defend Jalen Brunson as well. Roll the following clip. Who does Jalen Brunson remind you of? Well, that's a great question. I He's, uh, he's, he's forged out a you know, a, a niche in, in, in the NBA and really in, in, in league history and Nick history, which is, you know, very, very, very unique. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of Steve Nash, I suppose there's some James Harden. There's some, you know, I, I, you know, I could go on and on. I mean, there's some Dame Lillard, there's some, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of different elements, but he's, he's doing something that is very uniquely him. And, you know, I, I know Jalen well, cause we had him for his first couple of years when I was, when I was in Dallas, he's just, he's a, he's a guy that is, has extremely strong belief in himself and, you know, New York has turned him loose, you know, to really, um, go and just, take it to, to whatever extreme he can take it. And so um, it's been amazing to watch. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy for him, very proud of him, and very much not looking forward to playing, <laughs> you know, coaching against him. Can't say I blame him wanting to go against Jalen Brunson, wanting to coach against Jalen Brunson, trying to figure out how you defend Jalen. And then if he figures it out, what are you going to do after that? What are you going to throw at him after that? And he can light up almost anybody. He can torch almost anybody. The footwork, already legendary. The scoring, he can do it on each and every level. He can give you mid-ranges. He can give you threes. He can give you floaters. He can give you and ones. He can go to the line. He can hit his free throws. Each and everything you want Jalen Brunson to do, he can do. And even though he's quote-unquote undersized for a guard, he's one of the top league leaders in taking charges in the NBA. And he's only about six foot two. But honestly, even though he's listed as six foot two, he's probably more six foot. And even though that's the case, he is still putting his body on the line for the Knicks because that's the type of player that he is. You heard Rick Carlisle just say it. He has a high belief in himself, a very strong belief that no matter what is in front of him, he can accomplish it. He can take care of it and he can overcome it. So no matter if the Pacers have a game plan for Jalen Brunson, it's not going to stop him. Nick Nurse thought that he had a game plan for Jalen Brunson, and it worked for the first two games, then in game three and four and five, and even on the road in a closeout game six, Jalen Brunson went off, giving you 40-point game after 40-point game after 40-point game, but he wasn't only scoring. He was also passing the ball at an elite level as well, sometimes 10-plus assists. You're talking about somebody that people used to say, he's only a scoring guard. He can't pass. Now, they don't know what to say because his assist numbers are up there, his scoring is up there, and he's looking like one of the best players. Let me give that to you again. One of the best players in the postseason this year. That's how impactful he has been. Either he's helped contribute to scoring for the Knicks or he's actually done the scoring himself. 
Either way, he's been a huge proponent for the Knicks when he's been on the floor because each and every time he's out there, he just wills this Knicks team to do more, get better, take the lead, and never let it go. When Jalen's on the floor, I just feel a little bit more of a calmness in me. I feel okay. I feel taken care of because I know Jalen's not going to let the game get out of hand. And if it does, he's going to make sure he gets it back into reach. That's what we come to expect from Jalen because he does it each and every time you need him to. When we have a close game or we need a big bucket or we need an and one or we need to close the gap, who's always hitting those shots? It's normally Jalen Brunson. Now, obviously, he's not the only person who's doing it, but clearly he's the head of the snake for the New York Knicks team. And everybody knows it. And even though they know it, they can't stop it. That's the craziest thing. Everybody knows going into each and every game against the Knicks, you just have to stop Jalen. If you stop Jalen, then maybe you give yourself a chance to win. I say maybe because game one and game two against the Sixers, Jalen really didn't have great games. He didn't show up that much. But the other Knicks players, our role players, they did. And that's the difference there. When Jalen doesn't show up, another person on this team will. Next man up mentality. That's what this team has. And they also have experience in the postseason. They have experience in the second round. And even more than that, they know what it feels like to be defeated in the second round. And they don't want to feel that feeling again. The Pacers are a good team. They are a very explosive team, high paced team. They run up and down the court. But with the postseason, you can't really do that. The pace slows in the postseason, which is very bad news for the Indiana Pacers, but very good news for the Knicks. Because New York is already a very slow-paced team. If you pair that with the postseason and the way Jalen Brunson plays, his methodical approach and the way he isolates and devastates each and every single person in front of him, he's one of the most hardest players in the NBA right now to guard. You can't throw anything at him. And if you throw a double or triple team at him, he is so good. He has such a high IQ that he's going to pass out of it and either get the ball back or pass it to somebody else who's open who's going to make the shot. Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, Deuce McBride, even I Hart in the paint for that floater. No matter what you want, Jalen Brunson's going to give it to you. That's why Rick Carlisle, his former head coach, who knows him very well, said what he said. He is not looking forward to coaching against him because he knows Jalen Brunson's going to put on a show and he's going to make life very difficult for him and his Indiana Pacers team. But unfortunately, Jalen cannot be stopped. He cannot be figured out. And even when you think you have him figured out, he's going to flip the script on you and flip 47 or 48 points on your head. That's just what he does. It's the Jalen Brunson show time after time after time again. And not only by scoring. Sometimes he gets other players involved and then you really see the magic happen. Because when you see the doubles and the triples come on Jalen, and the rest of this Knicks team is open, and they have the rain to fire at will, they do that, and they oftentimes make the shots because they have the personnel, at least right now, that is capable of making the shots, including Josh Hart. I don't care what he shoots for the regular season. For the postseason, I think he's shooting around 42 to 43% from three. If that's the case, keep shooting them, Josh. Shoot them all the time. If you're open and you're clear, Keep shooting them because it's obvious it's working for the Knicks and it's working for you. That's going to be something that's going into the Knicks favor. But you got to respect Rick Carlisle here. He's not throwing shade at the Knicks. He's actually giving them a lot of praise ahead of the matchup. Some coaches might not do that. Some players might not do that. But the Indiana Pacers, that's exactly what they're doing. They're not trying to skip ahead of the Knicks because they know they can't. And even though the Knicks are focused on getting to the Eastern Conference Finals, they're not skipping over the Pacers either. They know they're going to be a very difficult team to beat because of the way they play. But if they control the pace, which I believe is going to happen anyways because of the postseason, and then they control the boards, which is going to happen because the Knicks have Mitchell Robinson, I Hart, and Josh Hart, I think the Knicks are going to win this series. I think they're going to win it in five games, but it wouldn't surprise me if they swept the Pacers. And it also wouldn't surprise me if this series went to six. Because again, with the Knicks and the Pacers, it's really all going to depend on, besides the rebounding and obviously the turnovers and who's going to control the pace, it's going to depend on the point guard play. Is Jalen Brunson going to be the one leading the charge with the Knicks, or is Tyrese Halliburton going to be the one leading the charge with the Pacers? Depending on who wins that matchup, that might be the key to who wins this series. And I have a lot of faith in Jalen Brunson. 
His numbers in the postseason are godly. They are terrifying. That's why Carlisle is saying what he's saying, because he knows if he can't stop Brunson, which, by the way, he can't, then he is going to have a very hard time trying to win this series. And they're not going to be able to win this series because not only do the Knicks have home court advantage, they also have the better team in this series. I don't care what you want to say about Siakam or Miles Turner. I have an OG and an OB. I have a Jalen Brunson and I have an iHeart and Mitchell Robinson that I can continue to put out there and stop your bigs each and every time I want to and take rebounds off the glass and continue to have second chance opportunities. Why are the Knicks going to win this series? Because they're going to shoot more and have more attempts at the rim. That's exactly why they're going to win. Second chance opportunities is how the Knicks win each and every game. How they beat most teams. That plus the legendary superstar play of Jalen Brunson. All of those things together. Plus Tom Thibodeau and the defense you know he's going to have this team playing. The Pacers are not going to be able to escape this one. The Bucks, they were able to escape. And they were also able to escape it because Giannis was not able to play and Dame, for a large part, was not involved to that series. They had a hobbled Chris Middleton to deal with. That's not really a game or a series. With the Knicks, you're going to get pushed around. It's going to be physical. You're going to be highly defended. I want to see what you do against that, Tyrese. I want to see you try to penetrate and create inside the paint against this Knicks team, Tyrese, because I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to shut you down. We're going to blow you out. And we're going to win this series convincingly, make another statement, and go all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, where we're likely going to face Boston. And if we do, we're going to make that series a movie. But the Knicks, they'll prove why you should never, ever count them out of any series. Again, Indy, not looking past you. We understand who you are. Much respect to you. But also, with all due respect to the Knicks and the roster that we have, you ain't touching us, you ain't beating us, and clearly, even by the eye test or the numbers, however you want to look at it, we have the better point guard. Jalen is better than Tyrese, and I think Jalen is a better fit for the Knicks than Tyrese is a better fit for the Pacers, given the current roster constructions of both teams. If the Pacers make some more additions, maybe I'll change my mind on that, but as of right now, I'll stand on what I said. Jalen over Tyrese, and in this series, he's going to show you why. I can't wait for Monday to come and for this series to start. Again, it's going to be highly competitive, extremely physical, and both point guards are going to come out and try to showcase why they're the best. But Jalen, he's going to prove why he's better. We already know he's better, but we know Jalen. He's going to prove it and show it come game one this Monday. But what about you guys? What did you think about head coach of the Indiana Pacers, Rick Carlisle, and his comments about Jalen Brunson and his terrifying abilities? Let me know in the comment section below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button, leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.